Target is proceeding on course. Target on course. You might be fast, but my satellite goes 7.56 kilometers per second. Try to outrun that. Target headed east, heading 09er Bravo 9er. Target on course to be intercepted. Target We're right on top of you now. In just a few seconds, game over. Target is escaping. Base is Delta Echo 7. Requested. Course correction required. Target is escaping. We've lost visual. We got her, boss. The base guards are bringing her to you. Got it. Welcome back, Doctor. I'm not telling you anything. We know what you were doing out there, in that blood-stained concrete torture box. You don't know anything. As doctors, we took an oath to protect human life and limit suffering. I understand that sometimes those two goals conflict with each other. You have no idea what you're talking about. This is a war zone, Dr. Mallard, not some comfortable morgue in Washington, D.C. Things work differently here. I have spent more than my fair share of time in a war zone, Dr. Marx, and I once watched a man tortured to the brink of death repeatedly. It was my job to keep him alive so that his tormentor could extend his suffering. I refused and instead ended his suffering and his life. Much as I suspect you did for the victims out at that dreadful facility. You have your facts wrong. Why don't you correct me then? I am a doctor. I save lives and end suffering. End of story. You were torturing people at that warehouse. No, never. That's not good enough. I would never intentionally inflict suffering on another human being. I'm not a torturer, Agent Gibbs. We saw the inside of your warehouse. We know what you and Husker were doing out there. He ordered me. 
He made me inject them with sodium pentothal so they wouldn't resist his questions. Then he ordered me to nurse them back to health, just as Dr. Mallard described from his own experiences. He wanted to extend their pain. But I never tortured anyone. It was always Captain Husker. I did as I was ordered. I eased their pain, reduced their suffering as best I could. Who were these people? Iraqi civilians, mostly. Need something more specific. They were all Iraqi civilians. People he picked up off the street who he suspected as having ties to terrorists. So you killed them? I tried to help them. Help them? I didn't kill them. I, I did as I was ordered. I eased their pain, reduced their suffering as best I could. We also found the succinylcholine. No, it's not something... It, he was inflicting terrible, unspeakable things. I couldn't let him keep doing that. Not to anyone. So I injected the succinylcholine instead of the sodium pentothal. But he found out. Yeah, he did. So you killed him, too? Yes, he found out. But no, I didn't kill him. Your autopsy proved that the commander was killed by a lethal injection of succinylcholine. You injected him. As he was dying, you hit him over the head to finish him off. It wasn't like that. When he found out, he threatened me. Asked me if I wanted to trade places with one of the victims. I was scared. He came at me. I already had a syringe, so I injected him. But he was strong. He fought back. What's the matter, Tony? Oh, caffeine crash. I don't know how the Gibbs man does it, but if coffee is his secret weapon, count me out. I mean, I like coffee as much as the next guy, but Gibbs is inhuman. How much did you lose by? It doesn't matter how many more he drank than me, okay? A lot. A whole lot. Like you're one to talk. You don't even drink real coffee, just that little soft drink. I'd like to see you try to switch to a real man's brew. Then we'll see who's laughing. You know, Tony, there's actually more caffeine in calf pow per ounce than in your typical cup of coffee. In fact, even with the latest coffee brewing technology, there is no way, either physical or chemical, to squeeze that much caffeine out of a coffee bean. You'd have to artificially add caffeine to reach the same levels, and that's not even counting the ginseng, vitamin B, and other stimulants in calf pow. Very nice, McGee. So what are you saying? They're saying you're the only one who can't hang with the boss. Three fingers scotch, one cube of ice. My friend is gonna stick with his soda. And I don't blame you. Looks like a nasty bruise on your arm. 
You put away one too many last night and take a spill? Astute as always, Mr. Benozzo. To the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Must be my breakfast. Mr. Donoso, you are under arrest. Gibbs. Agent Gibbs, this is Commander Premus calling from Iraq. What do you need, Commander? It's Dr. Marks. Yeah? She was found dead in her cell early this morning. The acting base doctor said she was strangled to death. What's up, boss? Dr. Marks was found dead this morning. Strangled. I thought I didn't have access. It's need to know. And now you need to know. So let's hear it. Naval Intelligence was running a sting operation in Iran, posing as weapons dealers. A black ops team made contact with a terrorist cell just outside of Amadan. Their mission was to identify the leadership and eradicate the entire cell. Let me guess, they screwed up. In so many words, yes. How? Things didn't go as planned. Before they could track and eliminate the terrorists, the officer in charge of the op was killed. The CO was murdered, so the op failed. Exactly. There's something else. What? This morning, two deep cover Navy SEALs were found murdered in their Dubai hotel room. SECNAV has requested our help in investigating their murders and securing their assets. And the SEALs are related to the Sting? That is what we believe. How? That's what I want you to find out. Anything else? Anthony Dinozo Sr. was arrested this morning. In Dubai. My father? What's the charge? I don't know. It's out of our jurisdiction. And Dubai hasn't been as agreeable sharing information lately, considering what's been going on in the Middle East. Dinozo, David, grab your gear. You're going to Dubai. Dinozo, seals first, then your father. Understood. Ducky, you're on body detail. Ziva, check for signs of a struggle. Seals often use high security laptops. If they had one, we need to find it. Did you find any signs of struggle? What is this? There is something under this cabinet. Tony, could you help me move this cabinet? You're welcome, Ziva.
Now let us see what is under this cabinet. There is some strange substance on it. Looks like blood, but better get Abby to confirm it. There is also a fingerprint on it. Where did this broken piece of mirror come from? The seal's laptop. Great. Now what? Ziva, you check the bathroom? A cell phone. I should photograph all of these. I know I don't need to tell you, but I need photos of the victims. And if you haven't already started, see if you can locate any stray bullets or bullet holes. One body done. Now I will take a picture of the other. It seems a bullet penetrated the sofa. Oh. A cell phone. Two victims, two cell phones. I believe that is all of them. A bullet hole.
bodies photographed. That is all of them. What is next? There is a piece of this mirror missing. This mirror has been shattered. I think that is all the evidence I will need to prove there was a struggle here. That is all of them. I am finished. The seal's laptop. Great. Now what? The door to the bathroom appeared strange to me. Perhaps you should check it out. The bullet must have gone straight through and lodged in the wall. A bullet hole. Great. Now what? The door to the bathroom appeared strange to me. Perhaps you should check it out. This door has been shut. There is still a bullet lodged inside. I am good. Boss, it's me. What do you got? We found two cell phones and an encrypted laptop that are longing for a wild foursome with McGee. Is that a joke? Yes. Though... Apparently not a very good one. I'll let McGee know. Boss? Boss? Hmm. That's strange. He hung up on me. Actually, on second thought, not strange at all. The SEALs were receiving phone calls from an overseas phone number that originated in Iraq. And guess who that number is registered to? Captain J.J. Husker.
The SEALs field reports are heavily encrypted, but from what I can decode, they repeatedly make mention of a Gentech Dynamics. These SEALs were definitely working for Captain Husker. Thanks, McGee. I'll be talking to Abby if you find anything else. <laughs>